All right, what's up, family? Welcome back to the Fuel for the Journey, Faith, Fashion, Fuel, all that good fun stuff. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube page. We talking about everything, literally. Um, so the Fuel for the Day, I'm back at Panera, y'all. Please don't judge me. I got the green tea passion um, drink. It's good. It's really low calories. It really don't have a lot of sugar, but oh my god, that blesses me every time. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to talk because I had to give me some breakfast, and I was like, you know what? Since I'm here, why not just have the conversation? All right, so let's talk about peace for a moment because I was thinking about it the other day, and some and I know that you can things can bring you peace and you can keep your peace and all the other stuff, but let's be honest, peace. If you ain't got God, peace fluctuates. And I'm not saying if you do have God that you won't experience things that make you feel like that you don't have peace. But peace is what God gives you. The Bible says, peace I give you, peace I leave with you. And so anything that God has given me, I'm not trying to give my peace away. And so that means if I got to make some changes, I got to disconnect from some people, I'm willing to do that. Why? Because I'm keeping my peace. And one of the best ways to keep your peace is keep your mind on God. Like the Bible says, he will keep you in perfect peace who mind is stayed on thee. And so if you find yourself up and down, up and down, and you're like, you know what? I'm finding peace, this, that, and third. It's one of the times you want to check is your relationship with God. But y'all look at this sandwich. This is a sausage, egg, and cheese on a soggy bagel. Oh my God. Mmm. That's peace and a bagel. Absolutely. That's peace and a bagel. No, seriously. But keeping your peace means you may have to disconnect from some people. And you shouldn't even feel bad about it. Like, I tell people all the time, you outgrow people. People change. Always remember this. People change. People grow. And people move on. You will outgrow people. And it is perfectly normal. It is perfectly fine, especially when that relationship has ran its course. You outgrow people. And as you grow, and there are some people that are seasonal. There are some people that are there for a lifetime. And then there are some people that when they're there for a season, when it's up, it's up. You can't force it. You can't make it work. You can't make it fit. You got to just learn and let it go. And that's a part of keeping your peace because that's a part of you being responsible for your peace. See, if God gives us something, he's not just giving it to us for us to just hang up as like an ornament or um, some type of decoration. He's giving it to us because he wants us to store. Anything he gives us, he wants us to store. He wants us to manage it well. So your peace must be managed. That means if those individuals are causing you a headache, why are you keeping them? No, I'm like the Bible. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. No, I got to get rid of those things. Why? Because I'm managing my peace. And that's the thing. God gives us peace in a season. And we're like, okay, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm feeling calm. You know, uh, I'm feeling serenity. You know, this is, this is wonderful. This is great. And then all of a sudden, we allow illegal people to intrude our lives under the guise of whatever title they want to come in as. And then when it's not working, we're like, oh my God, I just want to be, be delete, erase, block, get rid of. Why? Because everybody in your life must serve a purpose. And if you can't identify their purpose by their function, not by these, if you cannot identify their purpose by their function, then they don't need to be in your life. I didn't say identify them by their title because people say, well, I came in your life to be a mentor, but nothing about your life shows mentorship. No, it's cost my peace and peace is too expensive to give away. I'm telling you, it's too expensive and I'm willing to do what's ever necessary to get rid of it. Yeah, this is a cheat day. So I'm going to enjoy this bagel. But that's the thing. Because sometimes in life, we're like, I had it. 
Last season was great. What happened here? And watch this. Everything is not your fault, but everything does become your responsibility when it starts impeding your life. Everything is not your fault, but everything does become your responsibility when it's impeding your life. No, you don't just sit by and let things casually happen. You've got to, you've got to make hard decisions that's about you. So you're selfish in this moment. Yeah, <laughs> because I can't properly accomplish purpose. I can't properly accomplish what God has assigned to me because my peace is disturbed. When your peace is disturbed, everything is shaking. You feel like you're drowning. You feel like you're dying. Do you remember when the disciples was on the boat and Jesus was fast asleep? Listen, the man was asleep. Jesus Christ, the son of God, was asleep and they were in a storm. And the disciples is like, we about to die. <laughs> we are in a storm. Like, this season done came out of nowhere and we're in a storm and they're like, Jesus, let's wake him up. They woke him up and they said, first thing they said, do you care that we perish? The interesting thing about that is, is that when your peace is being disturbed, everything around you will feel like it's losing your grip, it's slipping out of your hands. And they're like, Jesus, do you care that we are perishing? And Jesus is like, well, how long am I going to be with, be with you? He got up. He didn't speak to the storm. He spoke to peace. Because their peace was disturbed. And because their peace was disturbed, the storm seemed bigger than what they could handle. But it really wasn't the problem of the storm. It was that their peace was disturbed because they couldn't see God in it anymore. When your peace is disturbed, God starts looking blurry. He starts looking like, are you going to do? Are you still able? Can I still trust you? That's why it's important to protect your peace at all. I don't care what happens. I don't care who it is. I must protect what he's given me. Why? Because that thing which he's given me is not only designed to bless me. It's designed to keep me and take me to the next level. It's your peace. And see, we play with it because we don't know the value of peace until it's gone. But we can't afford to be in a season any longer where it's just like, you know what? You know, I'm just having a bad day. No, no, no. Now that I have peace, I don't have bad days. I either have good days or better days. But as long as I got peace and peace in God is everything. And I'm telling you, when you got peace, you look at a storm and say, okay, now what you going to do? Because I won't be moved. When you got peace, peace will say, okay, I see you acting up, but I won't be moved by my emotions because I know who I trust. And when your peace is disturbed, everything else is up to grab. So what's today's lesson for fuel for the journey? Protect your peace. Manage your peace. Be willing to do whatever it takes to guard the peace that he's giving you. Because he said, peace, I give you. Peace, I leave with you. And because he gave it to me, I can't give it away. Whew. We got work to do. Because what the enemy wants to do, he wants to come after your peace. He wants to rob you of your peace. Because if he can rob you of your peace, he can rob you of your focus. If he can rob you of your peace, he can ro ro rob you of fulfilling your assignment. If he can rob you of your peace, he can rob you of whatever God has next for you. Protect and manage your peace. Put that in the bottom of the comment section. I'm going to protect my peace. Until next time, it's free for the journey. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow. Because we got more videos like this. Have a good one.